Okay, guys, here we go. It's my official draft coverage of all 32 picks. Well, at least maybe the top 25 in this year's draft. Here comes the worst commissioner ever. and especially the hockey fans here with us in Bridgestone Arena. And welcome to the many more watching around the world. Welcome to the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft. Two nights ago in this building, we honored the very best of the spectacular 2022-23 NHL season at the NHL Awards. Tonight and tomorrow, we celebrate the future of our clubs. The Chicago Blackhawks no longer on the clock. They are ready to make it official. Here we go, folks. In Nashville. Chicago Blackhawks would first like to recognize the incredible career of David Poyle and congratulate him on his retirement. We'd also like to congratulate the Vegas Golden Knights on their Stanley Cup championship. And we'd like to say hi to all of the Blackhawks fans back in Chicago at the Salt Shed. The Blackhawks fans here tonight and all the Blackhawks fans watching around the world. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. There it is, guys. He got drafted. Let's go. Because you can't build a backyard rink. Come on, Connor. Like other Canadian provinces. There it is. Of course, there's his mother who saw a lot of things get broken in her house. Picture frames, vases. Whatever it was, but the dream is now a reality. He'll make his NHL debut on ESPN October the 10th, a Tuesday opening night, part of our triple header coverage. Game two in Pittsburgh against Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. His he did it, folks. Bernard, welcome to Chicago, baby. I mean, of course, I wish him on the Rangers, but I kind of don't wish that because, like, where would we even play him? Here he is. This guy is, uh, look, he's had all eyes on him forever. I mean, I feel like we've known about Connor Bedard for the last five, six, seven years we've heard about him. And the amount of pressure that's on a kid like that in a country like Canada where hockey is, is everything. And for him to deliver and be at this moment in his life where he delivers as being the first overall pick, and it looks like he's just scratching the surface. That's the scary part. I mean, he's got hands, he's got vision, he's got the elusiveness, and he's got the shot. To me, the shot is what stands out. He can beat you in a lot of different ways. He's going to give a, a lot of nightmares to a lot of goals uh, in the NHL for years to come. He doesn't skate like Carter McDavid, Megan Chaika. Uh, he's 5'9 and 3 quarters. That Put on the jersey, scared, baby. He's not a big, burly center ice. Oh, he ha they have the number. But, uh, they have the number. Oh, here it is. He put on the jersey. Let's go, baby. Yes, sir. Oh, there it is. Taylor Hall and maybe Lucas Reichel on his wings. We'll have to see who they take with their next pick. If he's lucky, Andrew Crystal could slip. There's a very slim chance, but I know they're very good friends from the WHL. And fun fact. Oh, we'll take the picture. Fun fact. Connor Bedard, Matthew Wood, and Andrew Kristol played on the same Brick Invitational team for BC Junior Canucks in the Brick Invitational in, I'm pretty sure 2015 it was. Look at the release. Shout out to Coach Chippy, toe drag release right there, baby. <laughs> And you can't say, oh, his size is going to hamper him. If you've seen his World Junior highlights or his Regina Pat highlights, he knows how to be physical. 
So, it, it won't be a Pat LaFontaine thing where he gets creamed every time he's on the ice. He knows how to play the game of hockey. Great pick by Chicago. Out of 10, I'd rate it a 10 out of 10. There's no other way they could have gone there. They could have messed it up, but of course they didn't because there was only one pick to make. Thanks, Gucci. Kyle, so much excitement about Connor Bedard. What are realistic expectations for his rookie season? Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll see. We'll let him figure that out. He's a pretty special player, very special person, and uh, you know, we'll let him determine how special that uh, first season is. You know, we saw you make trades yesterday for Taylor Hall and Nick Foligno. What are other things you're going to do to ensure that he's successful in year one? Uh, you know what? We'll continue to look at, uh, at the marketplace and see what kind of veteran leadership's out there uh, to potentially surround him with. But uh, we feel like we've got a lot right now within the locker room, but uh, that's something you can never have enough of, so we'll keep looking. And I know that you guys are still in a rebuild, but when can we expect you guys in the playoffs again? Uh, you know what? I have no clue. I wish I knew. I wish I had that crystal ball. But um, it, all, we'll, all we'll do is keep collecting talent, letting these players develop, put them in the best situation to develop and do uh, the best players they can be and hopefully the best team we can be. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. One that won three Stanley Cups in your lifetime. What's going through your mind when you put on that sweater? Yeah, it's really hard to put into words. I mean, uh, you know, growing up, like you said, in an era where, you know, they were so dominant and so good with all the all the players I had and uh, man it's just it's incredible looking down and seeing it all myself so um, couldn't be happier and, and can't wait to get started. You know the hockey world has so many expectations for you but what are your expectations for your rookie season? Uh, I mean just right now it's focusing on having a good good rest of the summer and obviously going into camp and, and making the team that's the, that's the main goal and then you know if that if that happens all then right. you kind of step I'm not trying to cut him off here uh, but we all know you're making the right team now. bud. And your first game is going to be on ESPN it's in Pittsburgh and you're playing against Sidney Crosby. <laughs> What's that going to be like for you? Yeah like I said I gotta gotta make it first but um, that would be unreal my favorite player growing up and a big idol of mine so um, you know, I, I don't think if, if that happens that for me personally, you could script it any better. Thanks, Connor. Welcome to Chicago. Thank you. A lot of mystery. No one can figure out what Pat Verbeek. We're pretty Bowen sure that is gonna do Anaheim will be taking pick. Adam Fantilli, but after that, it's kind of a mystery. We probably know that Carlson and Smith are the next two, but who knows? Maybe one of them take a chance on Michka, which is very unlikely, but. Kevin Weeks, a, a former NHLer, compared Connor Bedard at this age to Sidney Crosby in his rookie year. The Anaheim Ducks make your second overall pick in this 2023 NHL entry draft. Is going to find out who's off the board, and then of course San Jose is waiting as well. The Anaheim Ducks with the number two overall pick of this year's draft. We would like to welcome all our fans watching at our draft party at uh, Brewery X. With our first selection, we are proud to select from Orbro SHL, Leo Carlson. Whoa! Big Whoa! Carlson instead of Van Dilly, buddy! Oh! Whoa! That is a pick! Great pick, but two over Van Tilly. Yes, Columbus. Columbus is gonna take Van Tilly. I'm pretty sure San Jose is gonna take Will Smith. Wow, that is a weird pick. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a good one because it's a very good pick. Leo Carlson is an amazing player, but I feel like Van Tilly's better. Andre Kopitar is a perfect comparison. And if Anaheim can get a player like that, they're set for the next year. Think of it. Troy Terry, Mason McTavish, uh, Trevor Zegers, and now Leo Carlson. And on defense, Jamie Drysdale, Olin Zellweger, Pavel Mintikov. Think of all of those guys. They're going to have a really good team in three to four years. I think they could be playoff bound in two to three years. Who knows? But... Van Tilly might have made better a better, right like, a better second pick than Carlson, but hey, he's still a very good player. I think Carlson was an A, a minus type of player for uh, Anaheim. I'd rate this pick a seven out of ten. Not a bad selection at all, but it's like 
the middle of ice with speed. I feel the like Vettel might have been the better pick here. Vettel comparison. Pierre Luc Dubois went to Los Angeles. That's it, guys. We are breaking news on our channel. We will be continuing the Steagle League. I was just waiting for this draft to happen so we could put everyone on their right team, but. Decent pick by Anaheim. One say would be better than Ping Fantilli, but Carlson's an amazing player. Okay. Pat Verbeek spent time with the Detroit Red Wings. Yep. The Detroit Red Wings have really had a penchant for Swedish players in their history. That's putting it mildly. Quite frankly, many great Swedish players. I think that was influential in the decision here for Pat Verbeek and his staff with Leo Carlson. Congratulations to him and them. But I gotta get a quick note in here. Okay. Because the hockey community is a small one. I wanna send best wishes to their goalie coach, Sudsy Maharaj, who's battling cancer right now and tuning in and watching. So shout out to Sudsy back in Oakville right now. He's done an amazing job with their goalies there at Anaheim. Absolutely. Anaheim will have I mean Cindy Crawford was the guy, uh, for sure. I uh, watched him on some uh, highlight tape when I was kid, so we got him. You won't play against him very often, but what will it be like when you finally get to play him? It's going to be amazing. I mean, as I said, I grew up, grew up, uh, grew up, uh, I lost the game, so yeah, uh, it's going to be real. Congratulations. Text to Nikit. Yeah, thanks so much. Pat, a lot of us were surprised to hear Leo Carlson's name there. Take us through that decision. Well, I think it's, uh, it's been a process over the last month or so, so we've had a lot of good debate. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, I, I would say real healthy debate on uh, which player, you know, obviously to take. And, and uh, I think in the end, we were really uh, intrigued with his, with his, you know, hockey IQ, his uh, creativity. Um, obviously, he's got really good size. And, and uh, probably what I love the bottom is, you know, it's really his two-way game. And I think there's a potential for him to re be a dominant player at both ends of the ice. What can we expect for him? How will he fit into your team next season? Well, we're, we're, we're going to go through that process because um, obviously he's able to go back to, uh, you know, uh, he can go back to Sweden, uh, he can go play junior. There's there's lots of things that you can play the world, you know, junior championship. So we're going to go through the process. We're going to start with going through a development camp. And then uh, once we get through that, then, you know, there'll be a, you know, a summer long discussion. Thanks, Pat. Okay. All right, here we go. Columbus, make your third overall pick. I don't think they can pass on Fantilli. I don't think they can pass on him, but... Yeah. Columbus is going Fantilli, and Will Smith is going San Jose. That's my projection, but maybe Montreal could trade it to the Rangers. Who knows? Please, Montreal, trade it to us. Please, I want me to is it going to be Adam Fantilli? They have a short time to make a big decision, and the decision is in. Here we go. Columbus, make your selection. Hi, J.D. Thank you, Nashville. We appreciate the great time you've shown us all. Congratulations, Vegas. Um, to a, a hockey lifer and a good friend, David Poyle, again, congratulations. A good man. Um, our fans back in Columbus, they're called the Fifth Line. They are at Pins and Easton. Have a party, gang. We appreciate y'all. To make our pick, I'd like to invite our general manager, Jarmo Kekalainen. Columbus Blue Jackets are proud to select from University of Michigan, there it is. Adam Fantilli. So, Great Adam pick by Columbus. Columbus, amazing choice, buds. That was a great pick. Think about this, folks. This might be scary for the East. Not for the Rangers, because we're going to have a good team for a while. But Rangers, Devils, Hurricanes should be top three in the division for a while. But think about this for the future. Fantilli, Johnson, Goudreau, Line, Wierenski, uh, who else? Oh, Giracek. Think about all of those players. And that is a great core to build around. They should be very proud about what they're doing there in um, Columbus. But I think Will Smith is going next. I'm hoping Matt Bamichkov falls to Montreal. They're either going to pass on him, or they might trade the pick, or they could take him. Who knows? But there are rumors that they are scared to take him. Fantilli is an amazing pick. 9.5 out of 10 for that pick by the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's just going right down the road from Michigan down to Columbus. Uh, this is a great pick for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And, and you know what? 
playing in the World Championship Pit for him in, in the spring, that was a very good experience for him because it was a slow start for him at the World Juniors, but he finished strong in the World Juniors. Really impressed with this young man. What does he have that you like, Megan Jacob? That goal in the World Championships, to piggyback on that, was incredible. I think he kind of just felt that he couldn't play at an NHL level already. And I talked to Brandon Narado, his coach at the University of Michigan. He said earlier in the year he was trying to beat people with his hands and really learned to use his body to shield on the wall. That translates very well into the NHL. Solid pick for Columbus. I think they were running up there to get him. <laughs> the Buckeyes State. That's where he's going. Listen, this guy to me is going to be turning on the cannon a lot. You know the cannon there in Nationwide Arena? Boom, boom. Yeah, and I want to see more of that cannon crew there in Columbus. It's a great city. It's a great area, great market. And I think in him, they're getting a guy that is a big body, Colby Baker winner, asserts himself against defensive players. You can see the tears in the eyes of his dad. Yeah. I spoke to the Hughes family earlier today, both Hughes parents. They were raving. They've got three kids that are studs. They were raving about him. That tells you a lot right there. Doing so for the top four and having the years as the only top three from Michigan. I got a feeling he's going to be in Columbus this season and play right away. His dad, dad coached him hard. He said, you're going to play 200 feet at a young age. You're not going to be dangling. You're going to learn to play the right way. And he's rewarded tonight as his son is taken by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Alright guys, here we go. Sorry we didn't have Will Smith's interview. Um, my phone died, but um, Montreal, please give us your pick. Jeff Gordon, you're a ranger in your heart. Please give us the pick for Lafreniere. Please do it. They might take Zach Benson, they might take... Uh, Ryan Leonard, who knows? The top five now in consecutive draft for the first time since the 60s. Here's Montreal's pick. We'd like to start by congratulating the Vegas Golden Knights. Also, like to wish David Poyle all the best in retirement. J'aimerais saluer nos partisans à Montréal et autour du monde. On apprécie votre passion. To make our selection, I will invite up our former fifth overall in 2005, Carrie Bryce. Oh no, they didn't trade it. All right. Bonsoir. The Canadian de Montréal are proud to select David. Reinbacker. <laughs> we planned it that way. David Reinbacker. Wow. <laughs> so David Reinbacker, that was the player many people thought they would take. He's a big Darn guy, cannon shooting defenseman, Megan Shiker. You are a Michigan man going to Columbus, Ohio. What do you want the Buckeyes to know about you? Uh, I'm super excited. Uh, obviously, you guys have a lot of Michigan men there already. And they're doing tremendous things for the team, so hopefully I can have a, somewhat of an impact like them. You have 125 people here. We just saw one of them, your dad, tearing up. Who are all these people and what do they mean to you? These are these are my best friends. These are my this is my family. These are my coaches, my teammates. Uh, everybody that's helped me get to where I'm at. And, and then being here and taking time out of their schedules and spending the money on the flights and the hotels, it means the world to me. I'm, I'm so grateful. Congratulations. Congratulations, Adam. Thank you. Thank you so much. So here come the Sharks now. Will Smith is there. There's been a lot of mystery. Here we go. The, sharks, which the way San they Jose go. Sharks, I'm and projecting they pick I know they love Will, Will Smith, Smith the going to Boston from U.S. Massachusetts natives. Is it from the NTDP? U.S. under 18, Will Smith. I like his game a lot. Will Smith, are you going to San Jose? We'll find out right now. Thank you, Nashville. You guys have been a great host. We've really enjoyed our time here. Uh, congratulations to David Boyle. Uh, great career managing. You know, someone who's been great to me and uh, helped mentor me and through along my first year. Um, also like to congratulate Vegas, Golden Knights on the cup <coughs> win, George McKee and Kelly McCrimmon. And I'd like to say hello and thank you to our fans watching around the world and at the SAP, SAP Center tonight. Our, to make our pick is Sharks legend, 
NHL all-time games played leader, Patrick Marlowe. With the first selection overall, the San Jose Sharks are proud to select Will Smith. Yeah! Let's go, Will! Will Smith! Welcome to San Jose, bud! Great pick by San Jose. I'd rate that an 8 out of 10. Very good player. You can hear them playing the Fresh Prince of Bel Air song in the back. Great pick by the San Jose Sharks. Will Smith will be a very talented player for them. They just need to get a few more pieces before I could say they are playoff ready. It might take two to three years, three to four years, whatever, but at least they're going to try. Will Smith is a great piece to build around. That's an amazing pick by the San Jose Sharks. Montreal, the next pick's up to you. I really want you to give it to us. I don't care about the three-year thing with Michkov. I just want him on my team. Soon after that. So again, that those three players all go into Boston College this fall. And so, Megan Chuck, a third time, four straight centers go at the top of the draft. Happened in 1981, happened in 2015. We said coming in, this is a strong center ice draft. What does this guy bring to the table? And you're rebuilding when you're looking at centers, right? You're stopping the covers, and Will Smith brings a lot of vision. The ability to see the ice and passing lanes that others don't, and he actually has the skill to complete those passes. Jersey. I mean, I feel like I kind of had to. I mean, uh, the name. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, trying to own it, and uh, I mean, I love the song too. Can you sing it for us? Right now, on camera. Why not? CSPM, yeah. let's go. <laughs> In West Philadelphia, born and raised, where the playgrounds where I spent most of my days, chilling out, relaxing, relaxing, all cool, shooting some people outside of school. That's incredible. It might be more impressive than your playing skill, but I know you are an impressive player. So tell me, who'd you grow up modeling your game after? Yeah, I mean, I loved Patrick Kane growing up. Um, I mean, ever since they were uh, winning all those cups, even though it was a Bruins fan, uh, I loved them. Awesome. And your two line mates on the U.S. program are Ryan Leonard and Gabe Perot. We should see them here tonight get called. You're about to be line mates also at Boston College. What's it going to be like, and what are your expectations for them tonight? Yeah, I mean, those are my brothers. I love those two guys. And um, I mean, we also got Morris in the crowd, too. So, um, I mean, they're the best. They're, I love hanging out with them. I love Coyotes, they need a new arena. They have two number one picks, six and 12. The Russian. Here we go. 
Arizona Coyotes are on the clock. The most talented player in this draft. This is it. Arizona with the sixth pick in the 2023 NHL draft. Who will you select? I think they're going to take Meechkov. I want them to take Meechkov so he doesn't fall to Philly or Washington. I'm, I'm pretty sure they might take Benson or Leonard or something, but I want them to take Meechkov. So Arizona, make the right move. Please take Meechkov. The safe move would be the safe move would be Benson, but I want them to take Meechkov. Arizona, please don't let me down. The Arizona Coyotes with the sixth overall selection of this draft. On behalf of the Arizona Coyotes, we'd like to congratulate the Vegas Knights on winning the Stanley Cup. We'd also like to thank the Nashville Predators and their amazing fans for hosting us this week. And to all of our fans in Arizona at Wasted Grain in Scottsdale, go Yotes. <coughs> and to make our selection, I'd like to invite Ryan Janikowski. The Arizona Coyotes are proud to select from Locomotive Yaroslav Dmitry Simashev. What? Weeksy, that's your boy, Simashev. Whoa! Me? That's right. Oh my god! He was supposed to go 20th! Oh my god! Arizona! What are you doing? You had Michigan and Leonard and Benson sitting in your lap and you toss him. For a great defensive defenseman, or I don't know what they just said. Why would you take him? Are you kidding me, Arizona? You're just ruining your franchise. Wow, that was a polarizing big by Arizona. They were just trying to screw themselves into the ground. No shame on Shimashev. He's a good player, but they could have gotten him at 20. They could have definitely gotten him at 12. Like, what are they doing? Oh my god. Like, what are they doing? I mean, he's just a man. He translates to the postseason, and we wonder if he'll be the next pick. I think Here, Breer's taking Leonard. Philadelphia, make your selection. The Philadelphia Flyers would like to thank the city of Nashville for their outstanding hospitality. We've had a very good time. It's going to get more fun. I would like to thank David Poyle. He was my general manager with the Washington Capitals, drafted me in 1988 in the seventh round. He got a lot better after that pick. Danny? With the uh, seventh, select, <laughs> seventh selection of the draft, the Flyers are proud to select from St. Petersburg in the KHL, Matt Vague, Michigan. Wow! There you go. The there it is. is. Meech Cobb's going to Philly, folks. Wow. Washington is probably kicking the themselves in the butt right there. They're like, we were one pick away from getting the next OV. Great pick by Philly. Even though I don't like Philadelphia, I forgot to give a rating on Arizona and um, San Jose's pick. San Jose. Actually, no, I did. But... Montreal's pick is a 5 out of 10, Arizona's is a 2, Philadelphia is a 9 out of 10. That's a great pick for them, but I, would, I wish we could have gotten Matt Bay Meechkov. But hey, that's a really good pick for them. I'm grateful that it goes to Philadelphia because they're not going to be good for a while, but Meechkov's going to be an amazing player. Good luck for them. Just look at these highlights. Meechkov is an amazing player. A steal. Scouts were a little scared to take him. That's why he dropped to seven. 
a few years ago, I remember he was being talked about by going at two, maybe even one ahead of Bedard, but that was a great pick by Philadelphia. Good for them. They really needed something. Him and Cutter Gauthier, I feel like, are going to be a very good duo, but who knows? Я очень счастлив, что оказался в Филадельфии. У меня просто нет слов. Это невероятные эмоции. I'm glad to be in Flyers. I have no words. Such an emotional moment. When do you expect to come to the NHL? Когда нам ждать тебя в НХЛ? Я думаю, что скоро. Это моя мечта. Things quite soon. It's his dream to be there. And what does it mean to you to get drafted to the NHL? Это много значит для меня, это моя мечта и моя мечта Кубок Стэнли. He says it means a lot for him, it's his dream, and his dream is also to win the Stanley Cup. Спасибо. Спасибо. Join the Philadelphia Flyers. Well, we, we can't wait to have that answer ourselves. Um, it is what it is. We know he's got a contract for three more seasons, but for us, we just felt, you know, after watching him play um, and after meeting him, we just felt it's a talent that we cannot pass up and if we have to wait we'll wait and um it is what it is what did he say in that meeting that convinced you that he was your guy um he, he seemed to have a really good time we met him actually we met him a, a couple times um and he, you could tell that for some reason he loved the flyers he wanted to be part of the flyers uh, we saw it on stage his reaction was was amazing um I, you know he convinced us basically in the meeting that um, he wanted to be there and he wanted to be a flyer, so our staff all felt really, really good about, about selecting him. Awesome, thanks Danny. Thanks Anna. All right, let's see Washington picks. And, and listen, the Philadelphia Flyers are a <laughs> global brand. Make no mistake about it. They have global reach, global fan base. I think that's the best pick that they could have made based on who was available. He's the best player that was remaining on the board, fellas. So yeah. now, what do the Capitals do? Ryan Leonard is still there. Dvorsky, Matthew Wood. Here come the Caps, eighth overall with their first round selection. Uh, the Washington Capitals would like to acknowledge David Poyle's longtime contribution to our organization and congratulate him on an outstanding career. With the eighth pick, Washington selects Ryan Leonard from the there it is. development program. There he is. We mentioned this is a That's man. a great pick from Washington, Washington Ryan Leonard. I'd rate that a seven and a half out of ten. Phil, yeah, yeah. Seven and a half out of ten. That's a great pick from uh, the Capitals. Um, he looks like a very skilled forward. He's a big guy. You know, that should be a good pick for the Capitals in the future. This, uh, this kid would have made a, a great Philadelphia Flyer just because of the way that he plays. Uh, but this is a good pick for Washington. I, you can't go wrong. This, you know, we talk about certain types of players that, that help you win in the regular season, and then you find out about players that you need to win in the playoffs. This guy falls in the category of guys that will help you win in the playoffs. His game translates to, to springtime hockey. He, he's, a, he's a sturdy guy. He hits. He gets in there, yet he has skill, and he can finish. Uh, he really made significant strides at the, at the national program, and, and a good pick here for the Washington Capitals. He'll head to Boston College again to play at least one year of college hockey. This is cool. But when you look at Tom Wilson, what Mr. Wilson, as I call him, has done to impact the game for the Washington Capitals, perhaps this is a diet Tom Wilson. Something they're looking at, they're saying, hey, a little low calorie, but a lot of the same taste, the same flavor. Scouts are calling the world for another Tom Wilson yeah. game event type player. So the fact that he has many of those attributes, Meg, I think goes exactly, goes well rather for exactly what they're looking for in the nation's capital. And not only does he have those attributes, but he scored big goals, right? Yeah. He had that OT goal. He yeah. also had the most scoring chances per game in that U18 World Championship. So he's getting high quality shots. He does, but Leonard has that shoot first tendency, always looking to shoot in the offensive zone, and volume plus quality makes scoring. Leonard has that in spades, so big body scoring will be good for Washington, but certainly looks like a Philadelphia Flyer type player. He is. He's got guts, and I will say this, you play with Tom 
Tom Wilson and you're in the same locker room on the same ice as Tom Wilson, you, you get even more guts. Like, you get a little bit more courageous. Sure. Remind him of the Kachuk brothers. What do you make of that comparison? Yeah, I think it's pretty honoring. Uh, those guys are truly special players, and to could be compared to those guys, it's really honoring. You're going to get the chance to play with Alex Ovechkin. What's that going to be like? Yeah. Uh, I know. So hopefully he doesn't have me with a one-timer in practice or anything like that, but yeah, it's really special. And for fans in Washington, what do you take most pride of in your game? Uh, probably my competitiveness. I think that's just kind of like who I am. Awesome. Congratulations, Ryan. Thank you. As they try to make the next step, the Red, Red Wings, Wings with the ninth pick, selection. who were who will they select? First, I'd like to congratulate David Poyle, uh, fantastic general manager, <laughs> fantastic person, and a great friend on a tremendous career. Also, I'd like to uh, congratulate the Vegas Golden Knights on a Stanley Cup championship. Uh, with the ninth pick in the draft, the Red Wings select from the Brandon Wheat Kings center, Nate Danielson. There it is. Center, Boosh. Yeah. Six feet, 186. Good pick, Nate Danielson. That's like a six and a half for the Red Wings. They have a lot of centers, but I think they'll make Danielson work. He is a very good player. So, yeah. Brandon Good pick by the um, Red Wings. surprised he was there at this 10th selection and they probably view him Megan as the best player available perhaps. Dvorsky is like Bo Horvat too so an incredible player puck possession play driver with high stick on puck possession time he can transport the puck out of the D zone and in the <coughs> offensive zone creating offense and can create on his own shot by carrying the puck and creating space for himself with team Slovakia leading four in the 2023 under 18 world championships and he led all fours in possession time per game. So he likes the puck on his stick at just over two minutes. Well, a lot of blues like the puck on their stick. Robert Thomas, Jordan Cairo, uh, at some point, we get a dish and shoot voice. But uh, <laughs> again, a strong draft for centers. We mentioned that. Yeah. It, this is. Uh, oh, blue! Come on, baby! It was a bit of a disappointing postseason. Come on, boys. A lot of their games in, Make in New York. the pick. The three guys we want. Callum Ritchie, uh, Tyler, Taylor, Taylor Molendike, or the big the one, prior, Gabriel Perot. So Please. I'm curious to see what they're going to reach for here. It's something. Callum Ritchie, off the Oshawa Generals. Guys, I like don't his blow game. it. He's a really good don't player. Don't take Kristoff. They also have a youngster I wouldn't, don't. in their group uh, in Offman. That's a kind of hard edge forward don't as well. Don't take Kristoff. So we don't need a left winger. We need a right winger or a center. 
or a defenseman. Also available. He's still out there too. Gavin Brindley's a little guy, but man, I love I watching like him. Me too. I like him. That yeah. too. Big yeah. brain, vision, yeah. Yeah. smart, and a competitor. Yeah. Right, let's go, yeah. Rangers. Make the, the right it's, decision, boys. Come on, guys. I don't think you will, but Gavin Brindley's going to be able to move here soon. Yeah, exactly. To your point. So the Rangers pick is in. 23rd overall for them. Did not have a first round pick last year. So here comes the Rangers pick. The New York Rangers are proud to select from the U.S. under 18 team, Gabriel Perez. Yes! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Come on! Let's go, Gabe! Woo! That is a great pick! Let's go! Jake Gensel? We're getting a Jake Gensel. We're good. Let's go! That is a great pick. Let's go, baby. Come on, Gabriel. Welcome to New York, bud. Let's go. It's a huge pick. This guy was about to go between 12 and 15. We got him at 23. Oh, that's a great pick. Wow. We got Gabriel Perot. Let's go, baby. Probably the smartest player in the draft. The smartest player in the draft that fell to 23. Single season point record. Record. And we got him. Let's go. Come on. He's part of that dynamic line. Woo! Let's go, baby. He makes guys miss though. This guy creates while not moving. That's yeah, it's, huge. It's so interesting to watch because it looks like he is creating meal. I'm sorry for interrupting. The chicken farm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting the jersey. You got me at the part. jersey. But yeah. it, there it is. We got another player that Put the jersey on. Let's see how you look in the game. Come on. Too, yeah. Yeah, I, I nice. Think, I think you know what you're getting in a player. You look good in the red, white, and blue, uh, bud. Like you're going to be here for a while. Yeah, maybe the pace is an issue, but when you're smart like that, you can find a way to get points. The new head coach here in an original predator, Andrew Burnett. I played with James Stewart. I played with him our rookie year in Owen Sound. Andrew Burnett had 162 points to lead the CHL. He was the seventh rounder. Everybody kept yep. telling us he could skate. That's what everybody kept saying, and we know that was one of his deficiencies. He went on to play over a thousand games in the National Hockey League, right. and now he's the head coach here in Nashville. So all of that to say, and this young man, and Yannick Perot's son, Gabriel Perot, very, very <laughs> brilliant hockey mind. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching our first annual coverage of the NHL draft. We'll see you guys in 2020. Well, we'll see you guys for more Stiga action, more video games, more football. See you in the future. Peace out.